Here's another question from Mike Ortiz. Says, hey, guys, is EQing your speakers the same as room correction? I'm a little confused. Ooh. Wow. My, oh, that's such a good question. Mm -hmm. It's such a good question. You don't even know how good of a question that is. <laughs> it's the best question. Yeah. That's that's uh, that should be your next YouTube video, um, Aaron. The, the best, best question the in best audio question of all time. <laughs> the best. This is I the agree. best. Yeah. Uh, so anybody want to get at that? Because I know what I feel. Yeah, I'll take it. That one's easy. Uh, no, it's not the same thing. There you go. Done. How come? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. So, um, so EQing your speakers. You got to think about like two separate things. You got your speaker and then you've got the room that you put your speaker in. And if you have a speaker that, you know, maybe isn't quite flat out of the box, maybe there's some things going on with it, then let's say you want to try to make that a, a more flat response speaker. So you're going to EQ that speaker to maybe tame a couple little resonances or maybe it's got a high frequency boost. You want to kind of flatten that down because you don't want to hear that in the room. So you flatten out that frequency response, doing so with anechoic data like I provide and other people provide. And then you put the speaker in the room. Now the room's going to have its own impact. So let's say typically like you have bass issues, resonances, and a bunch of peaks and dips. So you're going to go in with your equalizer and you're going to EQ down some of those bass resonances and things like that. So you've effectively improved your speaker by itself. Now you know how that speaker performs on its own. And then you take that speaker and you put it into the room and you say, oh, all these issues aren't the speaker because I know what the speaker's supposed to do. They must be the room. And now I'm going to try to fix the room to the best of my ability with the tools that I have on hand. And then there's also just kind of a little side jot that uh, in some ways, room treatments, bass traps, absorption panels, diffusers, those kind of things. Uh, in some ways, they could be considered like uh, an analog way of EQing if you wanted to, but just kind of keep in mind that there are other ways to get around problems other than just DSP or other than just room treatments. You can use effectively both to get a better overall sound in your room while also improving the overall sound of the speaker itself by using equalization on that speaker by itself and then putting it into the room and using additional equalization. How's that? Okay. I'm, I'm with Aaron on that. And one way that you would know the difference is let's say a lot of these speakers are active speakers, especially studio monitors. That means that they've applied EQ to the speakers themselves. But once you get that into a room, if, if uh, EQing your speakers and room correction were exactly the same, that would mean you didn't, you wouldn't have to do anything because you know, it's the same thing, but it's not. Uh, so the speaker can be EQ'd, but you still need to do some stuff because it's in that room. Just kind of like, hold on, so I'm getting a special delivery. Thank you. Nice. Oh, she wants. She wants this. Angela says, it. "Okay, it's distracting." Well, you want to see? Okay. So, um, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> she's, she's like, it's, 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 that's ugly. Um, that's ugly. Get that out of there. So yeah, they they are different, and a, a great example specifically is in the bass. Let's say you have a sub that measures perfectly flat. You get it in your room, and let's say you set up three, four of them. Well, if you didn't need to do anything, then that would be great, but you definitely do. You know, you really want to make the response as smooth as possible, and that is... I wouldn't call it room correction, though. That's the problem. Yeah, It is still a correction that has to do with what you're doing to the speaker itself, but taking the room into account. So it's a little bit of a misnomer, no, misnomer because you're not fixing the room itself. You are accounting for the room. Um, so hopefully that helps. I don't know that it does, but I think I think that's pretty much it. Make sure to check out our audio-only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi-fi or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for daily hi-fi.